you have raised and working on it and giving us uh, responses like we do to our customers. So we have a whole system which, just like our customers, we replicate it and uh, you know, use it, uh, use their services. The second aspect uh, is that, uh, like I told you, there is a, uh, you know, a centralized system. If you want to put in a transaction which is of a leave application, if you want to put in your time every day, if you want to put in uh, you know, uh, any application for travel, everything is through a centralized system. So uh, we practice what we preach and we have a good architecting team and have put the whole infrastructure to support the business of DCs. Thank you. Okay, so much. Um, so I will take the liberty of giving a slightly different perspective. Um, it, it is in support to whatever Bullas uh, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Prabhu said. One of the biggest challenges that is really facing us uh, today, if you, if you really think about it, is we know that the data is increasing, we know information requirement is increasing, that is established. Now, how do you predict what you would need for the future? I think Alok brought the point up very well. You definitely need capacity, you need performance, there is no doubt about it. But how much of a cost am I really willing to pay? That depends on a key element which is called as capacity planning. As an organization today, let's say I am a bank, would I need a 50 terabyte of storage? Would I need a 100 terabyte of storage? How much is it that I need? What are the different businesses that I am going to get into? If my business is very stable and if it is predictable, I will be able to say, yes, I would be able to do with this kind of a capacity, maybe 50 terabyte next year. So if I buy a scalable storage architecture, which will take me to 50 terabyte well and good. If I am a bank, what if I suddenly get acquired by another bank within the next one month? <laughs> what if the landscape alters? It's a practical problem and I'm sure that all of us have been reading newspapers. We know what is going on out there in the world. We know how the businesses are getting consolidated. If I am a bank, what if I had not deployed a centralized storage architecture? What if all my information was distributed in maybe 200 locations all across the world? When I get bought over by another bank, how am I going to consolidate that information from all these different places into a common database? These are the problems that are there and I think the business is extremely dynamic. We spoke about ideal processes. Unfortunately, today the ideal processes uh, address capacity modeling only for static requirements. They don't address capacity modeling for dynamic requirements, which means you need to have the vision to be able to figure out how complex the business is, what is happening in and around the industry, and you need to have the vision for a scalable storage architecture. Whichever the technology that you use, it depends, as Alok rightly said, it depends on each one of the business and the nature of business. You should have a scalable storage architecture. It should be available in a centralized location. It should be backed up very well, and you should be able to integrate it as soon as the business changes. That would be the perspective that I do. Okay. Um, so how do you solve this? I mean, how do you solve this enormity of your data interface and the challenge? Um, you know, um, there's a logical path always. Like, you know, you first have a, a, a silo application, direct, a direct access storage that is tried. Then you move to um, you know, NAS, network access, and then you move to storage again. So the, 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 the complexity also increases so that you'll be able to store more data. You, you adapt to the SAN technology. You, you know, build blade servers so that it has got higher capacity. You build virtualization on top of it so that it becomes, um, uh, you know, good, the good solution from the architecture perspective. There is another advantage in this uh, data explosion. What happens is now there is no other option than to centralize the data. So the moment you centralize the data and you know uh, remove all those disparate systems, then the managing capability becomes much better. So you have one large data uh, array in which you can uh, work on. So that is one advantage. Another thing is that you know we used to joke in the 1988 or 89 when the first time 160 MB drive came in half height. 
160 MB. So somebody was telling us during the conversation that what is the next 320 MB drive? So we laughed and said that is physically impossible. That is against the law of physics. But today, you know that you know you can get uh, 80 GB on a pen drive. So what is happening is, uh, at the, as the as the data is also uh, expanding, the storage size is shrinking, and more and more capacity uh, can be generated, uh, uh, and that is helping significantly. So now SAN uh, uh, devices can hold much more data in the in the in the, the footprint than what it used to do two years ago. So that is becoming an advantageous situation as well. So by managing it centrally, by making sure that you know you move to the higher storage area, uh, you know uh, SAN capacity, and also improving the server capacity by adding blade servers, virtualization, those kind of stuff, you will be able to get better computing power, better storage. So you saw some solutions which uh, industries implementing in banking or uh, in banking side and services for their customers themselves they should be scalable secure centralized so it's like we are coming full circle we went from centralized to distributed back from distributed to centralized for uh, whatever reasons and one of the good thing if you look at which came out from all four of them is that the biggest aspect is we design the right systems we architect the right system, we have the right people to design and architect. And that's where again you guys come into the picture, where you can play a big role. Understanding these right now in the college, you have enough time. When you get into the industry, you won't have that much time to learn. Right? So make a good foundation right now. It start from basic concepts. And if you know, if all of you, if you have given the interview, all of us when we take the interviews, we check for the basic concepts. We check, okay, what is virtualization, what is SAN, and then we go a little bit deeper, okay, write a W linked list, uh, C++ program and delete, uh, uh, write a data structure to delete uh, one link from it. But basic thing, we, within two minutes of the interview, in the initial side time, when we ask the general question and we ask the basic concept, that time mind is made up. Rest of it, half an hour if we are entering, just to keep you happy, to be honest with you. Okay, because we have come all the way from the far place, you have prepared it for so well, so to keep you happy, I'll spend half an hour with you. But my mind is set in first minute, first five minutes, based on what you answer. And that is based on your personality, based on what you answer, the basic fundamental questions. Right? And that's where you spend time, see, maybe not when you join French, you won't be designing from day one. You will have a 10 year, 20 year, or people like us who will help you, who will design and say, okay, go and code it, code it, right? But your mindset should be there. You should be able to come back and tell us, sir, here is the problem. If you do this, or you, you can do optimization like this, if we change the design this way, it will be better. And that's where you are start. Right? So let me go back, uh, since we are a little short of time, next 10 minutes, let's open it uh, for the people they are asked questions uh, related to this topic or whatever, uh, it's your forum for next 10 minutes. What's your question for the panels, based on what you have seen since morning? I have a question, as a user of uh, today's internet technology, we have, everyone has seen the Gmail offering 7 GB of storage space. Four years back I was having 10 MB mail account. Now, what is the intelligence that these companies are putting behind uh, the things to offer us this space? I know that today we have one terabyte disk available. We have all these things. Capacity is growing. But the, the deduplication kind of technologies we have heard about. What are the other intelligent solutions they are putting in the back? Okay, very good question. So, I, uh, let me answer and then we can, uh, other people can keep in. One is the, based on the value of the information, tier it. Okay, so once you receive the mail, take an example of email. Once you got the email, you read it, you answer it.